Have you ever wondered what living in a luxury high rise in the center of Manhattan looks like? I've got to say, the view is pretty amazing. But before we talk about the building, let's learn a little bit more about the neighborhood that surrounds it. Chelsea. Moving can be stressful. There are many factors to consider, and some are more obvious than others. How close am I to the subway? Where's the nearest grocery store? What if I need to go to urgent care? It's 2 a.m. and my dog's sick. Is anywhere still open? In today's video, we will answer those questions and more so you'll know if moving to Chelsea is the right fit for you. As a real estate agent here, I spend most of my time traveling around the city. So let's start with one of the most important factors to most New Yorkers, access to public transportation. In order to better understand what subway lines run through Chelsea, let's start by defining the borders. The western border is the Hudson River, which is easy enough to remember. The southern border runs along 14th Street to 6th Avenue. Eastern border runs up 6th Avenue until you reach 34th Street. And the northern border, you follow 34th Street back to the Hudson. Because Chelsea is rather large, many different subway lines run through. We have the 7 if you need to get to Long Island City, the ACE if you need to get to Brooklyn, Queens, or the northern tip of Manhattan. There's the 1 and 2 if you need to get all the way up to the Bronx and South Brooklyn. There's even a stop for the PATH train if you need to get to New Jersey. As far as public transportation goes, Chelsea is a great central location. Now that you know how easy it is to leave Chelsea, let's see what's there that would make you want to stay. Chelsea is known for its art scene, so there are dozens of galleries you can choose from on a day-to-day -day basis. Many of those galleries have exhibit openings with free drinks. If you're interested in trying to find one of those, I'd recommend following the Instagram account Thirsty Gallerina. They tend to post about a day or two before the event takes place, so it's a great option for last minute plan. If you're looking for something free to do on a Friday night, I would also recommend stopping by the Rubin Art Museum. From 6 to 10, they have Hey Two Night with free admission, cocktails, DJs, and more. And who could talk about Chelsea without mentioning the Highline? A mile long elevated walkway that's perfect for those looking to peer into strangers' windows. I'd personally rather take a stroll along the water and look at the Hudson without making awkward eye contact with someone in their living room, but to each their own. And don't worry, the building I'll be showing you later is way too high to have to worry about neighbors being able to peer in. Did all that walking make you hungry? Well then good thing you're surrounded by hundreds of options from basically every type of cuisine. The southern tip of the High Line actually ends at Chelsea Market, which has a bunch of different options as well as one of my personal favorites, Miznan, which is Israeli stuffed pitas that are phenomenal. If you're looking just to grab a drink, I would recommend the Trailer Park Lounge. The decor is exactly what you would expect from a place called Trailer Park Lounge. The burgers are surprisingly good and the drinks come with little umbrellas. So what more could you ask for? If you're looking for more of a sit down place, then you should give the Wilson a try. They're located inside the lobby of Hotel Inside by Malaya. The Wilson has great brunch and dinner options and they're also pet friendly. I clearly got very excited about all the dogs. Oh, and then there's a dog in it. Speaking of furry friends, if you find yourself in need of a vet, you have a handful of options, including one that's open 24 hours. You can sleep peacefully knowing that if your pet needs help in the middle of the night, you don't have to go too far. What about if you're sick? Well, as most New Yorkers know, you tend to go to urgent care rather than your primary. Lucky for you, in Chelsea, there seems to be an urgent care about every couple of blocks. After you're feeling better, you might wanna keep the health kick going by heading to the gym for a workout. Whether you're looking for an intense HIIT workout or something like a yoga class, Chelsea has you covered. I also can't mention working out in Chelsea without mentioning Chelsea Piers Fitness. It's a massive complex with basically any type of equipment you could want, as well as a large indoor pool. Also located on the pier is an indoor skating rink and Chelsea Piers Golf Club, which lets you hit golf balls into the Hudson. Such a unique experience. If you're looking for more of a private gym session, then stick around till the end. In the building I'll be showing you, they have a gym on the 25th floor with a view that is phenomenal. Now that you've gotten your dopamine fix from working out, let's keep the positive energy flowing with some shopping. 7th Avenue is also known as Fashion Avenue for a reason. I mean, sure that reason might be because Fashion Institute is located on 7th Avenue, but still, there are plenty of mom and pop shops in Chelsea. However, I couldn't help but notice just how many big brands are there. Who doesn't love shopping for knickknacks at Marshalls? If you've ever seen the TV show, Say Yes to the Dress, then you'll also recognize Kleinfels, which is also located in Chelsea. I had the privilege of visiting with a friend who's engaged. Are you saying yes to the dress? Yes, I am. Yay! Yay! Woo! Sorry, Matt, you'll have to wait until the wedding to see the gorgeous dress she picked out. If shopping isn't doing the trick, how about some self-care time at a spa? Whether you're looking for a fresh haircut or a relaxing massage, Chelsea has over a hundred salon and spas within their neighborhood limits. After you've been out and about spending your money all day, you might need to swing by the bank to deposit some more. 
Good thing there seems to be at least one bank on every corner. Cue the Apprentice theme song. Money, 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 money. Money. Look, just because I can't sing doesn't mean I won't. While walking around, you might also notice a bunch of storefront for lease signs, half of which are located next to a coming soon sign. Chelsea is a great place to expand your business or start a new one. Great foot traffic, high median income, and plenty of available options to find one that fits your need. What more could you ask for? After you're done with your busy day of gallery openings, eating out, doctor's visits, gym sessions, retail therapy, and daydreaming about your new business, on your way back home, you might need to pick up some groceries. Whole Foods is always a good option, or it's more affordable cousin Trader Joe's. If you're feeling like supporting a local business though, there are plenty of New York specific chains as well as small bodegas. And finally, after a long day, you have finally returned home to the Beatrice. One thing that makes this building unique before you even enter is the fact that it's actually the top half of a hotel. Don't worry about running into tourists though, the building has its own separate entrance around the corner. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, they do have a gym on the 25th floor that has a great view of the city, Here's a sneak peek. I felt a little too awkward to take a video while people were working out. They also have what they call the cloud lounge on the 54th floor, which I'll show you at the end of this video. Because they're located on top of a hotel, the building itself doesn't even start until the 25th floor, ensuring all the units have amazing views. Studios start at $4,000 and they're extremely spacious. All of their apartments have in-unit washer and dryers and great views of the city. This particular unit also has a giant pole in the middle that helps separate the living space from the bedroom space. This unit is also only on the 34th floor, which is the lowest unit that we'll be seeing. I was obsessed with the view from basically every apartment that I saw, so don't mind me as I look out the window a bunch. The one bedroom has my favorite view, so we're gonna save that one for last, and instead we're gonna skip ahead to the two bedroom. This layout is perfect for roommates, and every room has a beautiful view of the Empire State Building. The bedrooms are also queen size, so you'll be able to fit whatever furniture you need. We're all the way up on the 52nd floor, meaning everyone on street level is practically invisible. Two bedrooms start at $7,300, but one on a high floor like this is going to cost you over $8,000. And finally, the unit that you caught a glimpse of at the beginning of this video, a coveted corner unit. As soon as you walk in, the views are breathtaking. Not only do you have a gorgeous view of the Hudson, you can see all of the village and Fidei. You can even see the Statue of Liberty off in the distance. Even the window from the bedroom has a great view. Plenty of space to entertain. To say that I was obsessed with this unit is an understatement. Living here would be a dream, assuming you don't have a fear of heights. One bedrooms in this building start at 5,100, but for corner units, they do tend to be a little bit more expensive. And last but certainly not least, let's check out the Cloud Lounge. The Cloud Lounge is the entire top floor of the building. Not only do they have a pool table, they have plenty of space for you to entertain guests or get a little work done if you need a break from your apartment. They also have a gorgeous outdoor terrace with sweeping views of the city. If you're looking for your new home in Chelsea, don't hesitate to reach out. My inbox is always open.